name is Cecily Essery and I'm our coordinator for student leadership here in housing and I am so excited you're joining us today. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about our student leadership opportunities, whether it's Lead Hogs, it's NRHH, which is our service and recognition organization, RIC, which is our student government. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the RA position if you maybe want to be a student leader in that way someday and I'm sure we'll cover some other things. So um, stick with us today if you want to learn more about that. First, welcome to my office. Um, if you ever need something throughout the year, you just need, you have questions about student leadership, how to get involved, um, or you just want someone to talk to, my door is open, um, you can always find me. So um, we're gonna make our way to one of my favorite places in the housing office. First off, that's where we're at. We're in the housing office, come visit us. Um, but we have our student leadership office is where we have a couple different student leaders who have office space there. They are there on a regular basis. So let's head. That Do you way? want to introduce yourself? Oh yes, Henry. Oh yes, and the most important person. Oh yeah. Hey y'all. My name is Henry. I was a student at the U of A for four years and an RA for three years, and I'm gonna be the cameraman today. So be sure to uh, put your questions in, and I'll be sure to to ask Cecily them. And where are they tuning in from? I wonder. Yeah, and where are y'all to? Be sure to let us know where you're tuning in from. Um, and any question is a great question. So if you have anything to do with student leadership, we'll try to answer it. Um, also, fun fact, Henry was a student of mine when I was over Hot Tall. He was a lead hog. He was an RIC rep. Was all the things. He never did NRHH though. So I never it looks did like NRHH. Have to come back and do NRHH. Yeah. So many hats, Henry. I know. Yeah, Henry has all the, all the hats. All the so, activities. Um, Henry's a great guy to get to know as well. Mm -hmm. So um, we'll just introduce you to our next person, which is Kale. Hey guys, Hello. my name is Kale Lawsonager. I'm the president of our on-campus student government residence inner hall Congress. And today we're going to show you our student leadership office where the executives for Residence Inner Hall Congress and the National Residence Hall Honorary uh, do their office hours and are available to students. So over on this side is uh, where the NRHH executives work. Um, and if you swing around over here, we have two spots where our RIC executives work. Um, so to begin, I'll explain a little bit about Residence Inner Hall Congress and what it is. As I mentioned, um, I'm the president of Residence Inner Hall Congress, which is our on-campus student government. Um, the main function of RIC is to serve as the voice of the on-campus student. So the main ways that RIC does that is through uh, an elected House of Representatives. Uh, each hall elects representatives from their hall, uh, lead hogs, and they work uh, with two major things to help advocate for that voice of the on-campus student. The first of those is by using bills, um, and bills are a form of legislation that allows RAs, uh, lead hogs, anyone with an interest in helping the on-campus student access our $42,000 budget uh, to help fund programs and improvements around the halls. So big campus-wide programs can get funding from RIC, also small programs that lead hogs are putting on or just RAs are putting on within their floors and also improvements such as new water fountains or uh, in the past there's been foosball tables or uh, pool sticks, different th things like that um, that are uh, purchased using our budget um, to fund these improvements within the residence halls. The other form of legislation we use are resolutions and resolutions uh, allow the RIC House to make a statement on behalf of the voice of the on-campus student. So um, the reps work together to um, debate and vote on these resolutions that say this is the opinion of the students on our campus um, and then we use that to help advocate for that opinion. Um, one big example from last year was that we had a couple representatives and one of our executives work together to author a resolution um, supporting uh, increasing the number of water fountains that were in residence halls um, and when this passed we were able to take it to administration within University Housing uh, and they received it well um, and helped work with a plan so that we could um, increase the number and access to water fountains within residence halls. So the reason that this matters to you is because you will have the opportunity to become an RIC representative for your hall through Lead Hogs. Um, so your role as an RIC rep is to uh, collect the opinions of 
have elite hogs in your hall, your roommate, your neighbors, all, the, all your peers that live in your hall. Uh, you collect their opinion on different things going on around campus, um, things that they would like to see improve, and on current legislation that's been presented to the RIC House. So this way you know how to help voice their opinion during debate at House meetings, and also how to use their opinion to shape the way that you choose to vote on different bills and resolutions during the RIC House meetings. Um, and then from there, after you help gather that, uh, that feedback for your hall, you go to the, the House meetings where bills are presented, resolutions are presented, you debate them with other representatives, share the opinions that you and your peers have from your hall, um, and then in the end, every rep has one vote that they get um, to approve or deny a bill or a resolution, um, and then ideally it passes so we can fund a lot of great programs and improvements and initiatives on our campus. Um, so that's the main role of representatives, and I was fortunate enough to be a lead hog and a representative my freshman year for Hots Hall, and it was an amazing experience. It led to me uh, last year as a sophomore uh, filling in this position as the RIC president, and now I'm starting my second term. So I couldn't recommend it more. It's a great way to get involved on campus, uh, to really connect with your um, peers, your neighbors, in your residence hall, and also to improve your leadership or your leadership skills in a really practical way. Um, the other main part of RIC is the executive team. So we have an eight-person executive team that I get to oversee as the RIC president, and the rest of the executives have more specialized areas where they are able to advocate for students on our campus. For example, we have a director of sustainability who uh, works to promote sustainable practices within the residence halls um, and different sustainable programs acting as a resource for RAs as they program and things like that. Um, and most importantly, acting as a resource for the RIC representatives as they consider legislation, author legislation, sponsor legislation. Um, so we have a really great executive team this year um, that's super passionate about um, advocating for change on our campus and making the quality of living for residents on our campus better. And so uh, they really look forward to meeting you all, working with you, whether you choose to be a RIC rep or you just choose to be active in lead hogs or you're just a resident on campus. Um, I recommend coming to the slow, meeting these people um, because they're really great resources and they're really passionate about helping you. Um, the last thing I have to say about RIC is that you can visit our website here at ric.uark.edu. Here we have um, a couple different resources. This RIC 2022-2023 page uh, has information about um, being a representative, um, things like that, some quotes from past representatives on what their experience was like. So I recommend visiting this page and looking into that. You can also find a little more information about um, our election process, um, which I'll just touch on briefly. Um, the elections happen within your residence halls. Each hall is able to elect one representative per every 100 um, residents that they have in their hall. So uh, these elections will happen at Lead Hogs pretty early on, so keep your eye out for more information as we go over the summer and as you move on to campus. Um, if you have any questions about RIC or anything, make sure to ask them in the chat um, or visit this website to find my email and you can always reach out to me um, and I'll be happy to help. And I look forward to meeting you soon and having you on campus. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kale. So, yeah, guys, be sure to uh, let us know if you have any questions about RIC. And one question I have for you, Kale, what has been uh, your favorite thing about being involved in student leadership, RIC, and uh, student government? Uh, my favorite part, actually hands down probably, is all the great people I meet who come from different backgrounds. Um, I'm not from Arkansas. I'm from Wisconsin. And so I didn't really know many people when I first moved here. Um, and so... I got to meet people from Arkansas, Texas, Missouri, Kansas, all over. Um, and when you work in student government, you get um, great opportunities to meet people who are really passionate about different things. You get to learn their stories, what motivates them, um, and all of those things. And then you get to work with them. Um, and as RIC president, I've really gotten to support people as they advocate for the things that they're passionate about, the change that they want to see. Um, so it's really eye-opening, it's encouraging to me, um, and that's kind of what makes me love it and makes me want to do it every single day. Awesome. And uh, one more question I had. 
Uh, what advice would you give uh, for people running their campaigns when they're uh, trying to become RIC reps? Okay, so what I would say um, is that it's honestly pretty casual. Um, people, people love to see other genuine people. They want um, people to represent them who feel real, um, who they feel like that they're able to naturally connect with, and people that aren't um, only trying to connect with them maybe at the beginning of the year because they want them to vote for them for RIC or they, they're using them to um, basically push their own agenda. People love people who they can connect with genuinely. So I recommend being yourself, being real, reaching out to people, being really intentional about forming those connections. Um, and uh, just introduce yourself to people, figure out, you know, why did they choose to come to the U of A? What, what drives them? What are they interested in? Um, and different things like that, I think, is pretty much almost a foolproof way of, of you know, mm -hmm. getting people to trust you and getting people to um, want to support you as you choose to represent them. Gotcha. Awesome. Thank Absolutely. you so much. All right, so um, be sure to let us know if you have any questions about RSC, but we're going to move on. And Cecily. All right, well, Kale touched on one of the things that is really valuable about getting involved in student leadership, and that is like finding connection and community and learning from other people. And so if you're looking for that, I mean, I imagine a lot of you are if you're coming to college. Um, there are thousands of people you can meet, but if you're looking for a smaller pocket of people who live in your residence hall and you want to get to know them, and you're a leader, um, or maybe want to become a leader, maybe you're wanting to practice some of those skills, um, then our Lead Hawks program is a great way to get involved. Um, it's very low entry. It is something that you can try, and if you decide there's another place for you to get involved, awesome. But if you decide um, you want this place to have a launching pad for understanding what it means to um, navigate change, how to advocate for people, how to uh, really have and find mentorship, then this is a great program. Um, so it's for any student who lives on campus. It's for um, mainly freshmen, but we also have a uh, lead more, which is for our students who live on campus who are upperclassmen. So um, Kale was a lead hog, Henry was a lead hog, and um, actually both of them were my lead hogs when I was a whole director, so, um, or a CRE. Get to know your CRE, that's a great mm -hmm. piece of advice I have for you. Um, but all that to say, um, they when you're part of lead hogs, you get to do things like lead passion projects. Let's say you're passionate about something and you want a space to have um, money and funding to do an event on campus or you really want to um, lead a service project or you just have something you want to do on campus once you get here then this is a great space to do that because there's a lot of resources and a lot of people and um, advisors who can help you navigate um, that that project so there's passion projects there's um, programs and events for the hall you can get involved in RIC um, a lot of Lead Hogs groups will also do things like hall improvements. They'll be like, hey, we're getting together every Monday night and we've actually all noticed that we need more equipment in our gym space. Um, let's get together and let's lead some change and get some more gym equipment. Random things like that. So it's very student driven. Um, they meet every week at six o'clock on Mondays. So um, for a lot of you that works for um, some of our Greek life students, it can be a little bit more difficult because chapter is on Monday nights. And so I encourage you if you want to do both, come to as much of Lead Hogs as you can and then jet out and go to chapter meetings. If you are in Maples or Reed, we do have a Tuesday night meeting. That is the only group who has um, a Tuesday night meeting as well as the Monday. That's because there's just so many Greek students in that building and we want to give you that opportunity to be involved. Um, to get involved with Lead Hogs, you really can get involved all year long, but we do have a priority de deadline for people joining at the very beginning of the year. So you have like nine more days is it the 11th um so july 20th next wednesday is our deadline you have until midnight highly recommend you do it go on our website leadhogs at uwork.edu and um, it'll say get involved and you can fill out the application um, if you're interested in um oh, sorry back up you will hear back from us in about uh, one to two weeks and then if you are accepted then you'll move in early you will go through an orientation. It's just a quick, like, fun, get to know people. Welcome to Lead Hogs event um, when you first moved in, move in. We'll do a few community building events, like we'll go to the local Family Fun Center. Um, we'll do another community building event. And then um, you will also help with move-in. So this is a fun way to get to know people right away. Um, you will find some volunteer shifts 
and or you'll pick them and then you'll get to volunteer to help other people move in because you're going to move in first um, before everybody else and so great way to get to know people and then also if you're a part of lead hogs and you're taking university perspectives you can sign up for a lead hog specific university perspectives course um, where you're with lead hogs from all across campus meeting for your required course so um that's also an option which is pretty great um trying to think of that anything else i think that's a lot of, does yeah. any questions that people have yeah there? so be sure to ask us any questions you have about lead hogs but um cicely could you tell us any uh like what favorite memories you have about lead hogs whether it be programs or meetings or anything like that uh i think I there's like, a lot there's a lot we had uh, mm -hmm. a lot of really great programs we i think one of my favorite was um during covid we, it was really hard to do a lot with lead hogs because we were virtual, but towards the end of the year, we started to be able to meet outside and the group really wanted to plan a karaoke. It was like a, a um, island theme karaoke night. We brought a cookie food truck, no ice cream food truck, and um, we set up karaoke and the advisors had helped, you know, helped them plan and we were like, we'll be there until eight or nine. And the group wanted to, party for so long that the advisors just left we were like we can't be here all night like we also have to do things and so we let the lead hogs just like I think they're you all Kale was there I think <laughs> and I think they partied until like midnight midnight, midnight about just doing karaoke and oh it was a blast and yeah. it was just a great way to end the year but it's things like that that lead hogs have ideas and then we help make that happen um, we also had um, during Henry's freshman year there was a girl who really wanted to do a service project where they collected prom dresses for students in need and then um, also did like a makeup day for students on their prom day. And so she coordinated all of that with the local school district and then had them come to campus to pick a dress and um, get all done up on their um, prom day. And I think those are just really cool projects to watch students um, be able to bring to life. So those are some of my favorite memories. Awesome. And can people apply uh, like throughout the year? Yes. Uh, so gotcha. again, that priority de deadline is on August or July 20th, but then it will close for about 10, 14 days, and then they'll reopen back up. So anybody is welcome to join Lead Hogs. Like, bring a friend. Always bring your friends to Lead Hogs. It's a great way to um, kind of help bring people in and build that community. Gotcha. And it looks like we have a few questions coming in. Yeah. So if you are not able to move in early on the 11th, can you still be a Lead Hog? Yes. Great question. I do not want that to stop anybody. It's meant to be a benefit, and it's supposed to help your experience. But if you can't move in early, just keep an eye on all the emails and things you can join um, and join us when you can. Gotcha. And another question is, is I'm in band, so I won't be able to help with moving. Can I still participate? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. so, so kind of the same answer as the other one, like sorority recruitment, band, things like that. Focus on, you have to prioritize that, but when you can join us, join us. Awesome. Lead Dogs is pretty casual. It's very like, very low key, very student driven, the advisor are really chill, but it's also like a really meaningful experience. So it's nothing to stress about, that's for sure. Gotcha. Well, I think that's all the questions we have about lead hogs and, um, but Dona, you can always ask us about lead hogs or RIC uh, throughout the rest of the stream, y'all. Cool, and you can also email us at leadhogs at uark.edu if you have any questions at all. Gotcha. Well, we'll transition now into our last main um, student leadership organization that we have in housing. So I'll come over here to the NRHH side. Um, I do not get to be the president of NRHH too, but they have an awesome executive team that's super passionate about the two main pillars of NRHH, which are service and recognition. Um, so NRHH, I like to compare it to NHS, if any of you were involved in NHS, National Honor Society in high school, um, because NRHH is really focused on recognizing the great things that are happening and that people are doing on our campus um, and also helping to grow our campus community through providing volunteer opportunities and serving our uh, on-campus community. So they do one project that's specific to each every month. Um, and as a general body member of NRHH, uh, you meet every two weeks. Um, so every other week you meet for one hour. It's super casual with a lot of fun people. Um, and you just do service projects, plan service events, um, and things like that. We actually are able to see a couple of examples over here. Um, they're they have some food that's been collected. So uh, they kind of collaborate with our food can or our food pantry on campus um, and they collect this food through NRHH and help donate it through the food pantry um, so that the food pantry can then help disperse it to students who are in need of uh, food products and things like that. So uh, I know last year they also did um, 
a project where they made dog toys um, uh, with old t-shirts, I think. Uh, they helped tie blankets for um, individuals who struggled to get warm clothing during uh, the colder winter months. So NRHH is just a great way to help the uh, community, not just the campus community, but I think the Northwest Arkansas community as a whole really benefits from the work that NRHH Get involved is to follow the UARC NRHH Instagram. Um, they have a lot of super cool content. Um, they keep it up to date with uh, lots of updates, things like that. So follow it. Um, that's how you can get more information. You can also look on HogSync um, for updates and more information as well about what they have going on and information about how to get involved. If you have any questions about NRHH, I'd be happy to answer those the best I can. Cecily as well. Gotcha. So can you be involved um, in NRHH and RIC? You can be involved in NRHH and everything. Um, mm. there's, there's really no conflict. Um, that's the best thing about NRHH is that uh, it's really casual and just a great way for people who are passionate about service and volunteering uh, and recognizing the great work others are doing to meet and do those things. Um, but there's no huge commitment. It's not super time consuming. And if you can't make it to a service project one month, that doesn't mean you can't be involved in NRHH. You can go to service projects later on um, and things like that. So don't let any commitments be um, an obstacle to being involved in NRHH. Gotcha. And could you explain one more time how to join NRHH? So there's a kind of a long process that goes on with it. Um, they have uh, a pre-membership period. Um, and so it's, it's a little more advanced than I could probably explain on here. But um, to start, I think, go to HogSync, find out about when they're meeting, um, and show up to some of their first few meetings, and you can get more information there. Uh, the other great way is the Pick One program. Um, so if you've heard about that, Pick One is a great way to kind of uh, find your place early on on campus. So to learn more about NRHH for the Pick One program, choose NRHH by August 1st. Um, so that you can participate in the NRHH Pick One um, and then learn a little more about NRHH, how it works, how it functions, and um, I'm sure if you do it, you'll find that you really do want to get involved further in NRHH. Awesome. Well, be sure to let us know, um, y'all, what questions you have about NRHH. And Cecily, what do we have next? Um, we have Kale talking about our fundraisers. Okay. Awesome, Kale. Okay. Let's do it. I'll circle back over here just to talk about a few fundraisers that we do for our organizations. Um, so. Right here, um, you can see a few um, items uh, that are room essentials. So I better grab my paper so I don't forget the deadlines. Okay, so the deadline to get any of these is July 15th, which I believe is Friday. So um, to order your room essentials, uh, hop on by Friday and check those out. You can find the link to the room essentials on uh, the MoveIn website, movein.uark.edu. Um, so check that out. Uh, obviously, there's, there's bed sheets and things like that. They have headboards on there too, just different room items. Um, and that way it helps. Uh, we put these in your room right away so you don't have to go buy them at different stores back home and haul them down here or wait till you get here and go around to Walmart, Target, Kohl's, just everywhere trying to gather the stuff you need. You can order them right online. They're in your room right when you get here for moving. So it's super convenient. Um, another great one we do is micro fridges. Uh, that deadline's August 1st. Once again, the link's at movein.uark.edu. Um, and it's a microwave freezer fridge combination, three in one. Uh, we also put that in your room before moving, so it's there right away. Uh, you can use it for a fridge. Fridges take up lots of space, so um, that's something really nice to not have to haul to campus. Um, and the last big fundraiser is these care packages here. Um, so tell your parents about these. Um, because you're gonna want some of the snacks that are in these. Your parents can sign up to have them delivered uh, to you throughout the year. They come with um, things like stress balls too, but also chips, trail mix, cookies, hot chocolate, other snacks like that. Um, so it's a really great gift to get. Um, and I believe they also come with a note in there too that your parents can even personalize. So you can have a nice little motivational note from your parents and they come at really cool times, holidays, um, around finals, different things like that. Um, so the perfect time that you need um, uh, some treats to cheer you up. So the deadline for that one is July 18th. Once again, you can find the link to sign up for those at movein.uark.edu. So you have till the end of this week, basically, for the room essentials items um, until next Monday, it looks like, for the care packages. And then 
a couple more weeks for the micro fridges, but check those out. Uh, a lot of them are really great deals actually, I think. So um, they're convenient, everything like that. So look into those, um, there's some great options. Awesome. All right, what's next, Cecily? All right, the last thing we have is um, a little bit of information about becoming an RA. This is another way to get involved in housing. Um, it's a really great way to find community, find mentorship through student employment. So um, if you're interested in the resident assistant position, really what it is, it's a way to for upperclassmen students to mentor, um, to help with like um, working the front desk, do events and programs, um, help with crisis management in the residence halls. And so really your RA is someone you're, they're probably gonna be one of the first people you meet when you get here. Um, and they're there for you if you need something throughout the year. Um, whether it's you go through, you're going through a hard time or you just need somebody to like tell some good news to, um, your RA will live on your floor in your residence hall. And um, there's a couple of different types of RAs. So if you're someone who really loves community building, you really love just like, you know, that one-on-one -on -one relationship with people or just like that community building, um, then we have community RAs for that. We also have six other specialized positions. So if you're like, hey, I really want experience um, that's gonna really translate to my resume, then we have six different RA positions, which are um, our Lead Hogs Advisor um, RAs, which are our leadership RAs. We have wellness RAs, we have diversity and inclusion RAs, we have event management RAs, marketing RAs, and academic outreach RAs. So um, if you ever need help in one of those areas, there's someone who works in your building or for your building um, that you can go to. And then also if you're interested in um, filling one of those positions at some point, then what I would advise you to do is keep an eye out on the UARC RA Instagram, um, also on your email, and starting around September, it's really early, you'll start to see information about interest sessions. So, um, these intercessions will tell you all about what it's like to be an RA, what the compensation is, how many hours you work. Um, it's a 20 hours a week um, role. And um, then you'll get the application for the RA job. So the only thing you really need to know now is if you're interested in becoming an RA, keep an eye out for those intercession dates. So um, if you have any questions about that, you can also email rahire at uark.edu and our staff can help, help answer those questions. But it's something to look into early, um, and I highly recommend you apply, even if you're like not quite positive you want to do it. Um, it's good to, to do the application, so. Gotcha. Yeah, any questions about that? Yeah, who was uh, your favorite RA and why was it me? <laughs> <laughs> Henry was pretty great. I had him for two years or three? Two? One year as a so, two years as an RA, and then he left me. Just for, I did, yeah. Yeah, it's okay, it's fine, mm -hmm. it's all fine. And there's a senior RA too. That's another position you can hold mm -hmm. today after you want a little time in a, in a <laughs> little, little, a little, little yeah, a little, a little bit of experience before that. Yeah. But um, yeah, let us know y'all what questions you have about becoming an RA, um, as well as any other student leadership. We're going to hang out here for a little bit more and also let us know uh, what you're uh, most excited for, for this upcoming, uh, upcoming school year. But in the meet with us, I yeah. think that's what I would be most excited yeah. for. Yeah. Absolutely. Just kidding. You only mm -hmm. want to hang out with Kale. It's like, no, me. Cecily's pretty great. She's, yeah. Mm. Kale, what's, what's a fun fact about Kale that we know? Kale, what, Kale what's, what, what's fun fact? What's hey, fun what's fact? what's your high school mascots? Uh, yeah. My high school mascot. Yeah, so I mentioned I'm from Wisconsin. I'm from a town called Monroe in Wisconsin. And my high school mascot was the Cheesemakers. Uh, we, take, <laughs> we take our cheese making very seriously in Monroe. Mm -hmm. I spent some time working at the cheese factory, working in the lab. Big uh, cheese guy. Yeah, doing some mm -hmm. tests. I love cheese. Um, Interesting. We have a festival um, every other year and even years in September called Cheese Days. Mm -hmm. uh, cheese Days in Monroe. Pretty much the coolest festival ever because you just get to eat like cheese sandwiches, fried cheese curds, stuff like that. Um, unfortunately, the Hogs have a home football game that weekend, so I don't think I'll be trekking back to my hometown oh, no. for Cheese Days. But um, if you're not interested in the Hogs football game, which you should be, but if you're not and you want to go to Cheese Days in Monroe, um, hit me up. I can get you some more information. But <laughs> Go to football games. I love going to football games. You'll probably see me down in the front row. Um, so I, I love football. That's probably the most fun fact about me. Gotcha. I feel like Kale's a good example, too, of what it looks like to get involved as a freshman. Mm -hmm. um, like, I feel like you did everything as a freshman. You were just I going everything. everything. Love all everything. the A-Week events, all of the fun housing events. You just go to them all. You'll meet so many people. Yeah, he's president, right? Now he's yeah. president no, for two years. He's mo moving up in the world. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, in all seriousness, I do really recommend getting involved. Um, you might think that something sounds weird or strange, but um, 
it's getting involved in everything, at least trying it once, is really the best way to find where you fit in, uh, the people that you want to uh, basically invest your time in, um, and also really where your passion lies. Because um, even, you know, I thought where my, I knew where my passion lied coming out of high school, um, and I think, oh, it's like almost two years later now, but that's crazy to think about. It, time goes fast too. Um, but a couple years later, uh, as you grow older and get new experiences, uh, your passions start to change and you find them in new spots. Um, and if I went to got involved, I don't think I would have recognized that as well. Um, and I wouldn't know, I wouldn't have the resources and wouldn't have the connections to be able to um, immerse myself in those areas that I truly am passionate about. So I definitely recommend getting involved in everything. Um, you'll meet a lot of great people that way. It'll open the door for tons of opportunities. Um, and then you'll be able to kind of specialize more in things you're super passionate about and interested in as you go down the road. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that like some of your best advice for freshmen, uh, like coming to coming to the university? That's some of my best advice for freshmen, I'd say. Um, gotcha. I would say other advice, take your classes seriously, but not too seriously. Um, <laughs> make, make lots of friends. Uh, there's really great people from all over, kind of like why I talked about why I love um, just being involved in student government, but really anything is the people you get to meet because there's a there's tremendous people and they all have uh, really unique characteristics and backstories and things that they're passionate about and reasons why they're passionate about those things. Connecting with people allows you to hear those stories um, and it really makes your college experience so much more fulfilling. So um, I, I definitely recommend just meeting as many people as you can and really getting to know them and getting to know, I guess, what makes them, mm -hmm. what makes them tick, what makes them go, so. Uh, I feel like on top of that, I would say, like, get to know your peers, but also, like, as a staff member, mm -hmm. I'd really encourage you to get to know staff and faculty, your professors, um, because, like, sometimes it can be a little bit intimidating. Like, I find out that students are, like, scared of me sometimes. I'm like, what? Like, it's, it's Cecily's, these videos, Cecily's <laughs> definitely very scary. <laughs> like, just, like, you can just see it. Me. So mm -hmm. my advice to you is don't be afraid of your professors. Don't be afraid of staff members. Just because we're old doesn't mm -hmm. mean we're scary. Um, we work for the university because we love students. And so like approach us, get to know us, ask us questions. We want to help you and mentor you. So mm -hmm. that's my other piece of advice going along with getting to know people. Yeah. So Cecily, to make you seem less scary, could you tell us more about like what you do at a uh, university housing and just remind um, us what you my do? My job is to help make dreams come true. Like mm -hmm. that's my every day. Mm -hmm. um, I'm joking, but kind of not really. Um, mm -hmm. I oversee the Lead Hogs program, so a lot of that is like what the Lead Hogs experience looks like in training the advisors. But then I also work with RIC like every day, it feels every like we day. respond to the needs that students have, um, really helping the exec team and helping them lead um, the student body well or, um, or lead our students who live in our residence hall well. And then NRHH is getting to do service and making people happy because you're sending them thank you notes and doing projects for them. So. Um, my job is very much back in support for the students that um, I advise. So, um, yeah, it's it's so it's so great. So it's I here full time, forty hours a week. Um, I even live on campus. Pretty fun. So um, yeah, living living the dream. Awesome. Gotcha. And one last question I had, and it's also for people in the chat. Uh, Kayla, what's your favorite cheese? Um, and everyone in the chat, let us know what your favorite cheese is too. I'm not much of a cheese guy, but Kale, I'm curious to see what you say. I'm interested. I'm interested to hear. Um, my favorite kind of cheese is probably Swiss cheese. Uh, my hometown's mm -hmm. most known for Swiss cheese. Uh, I like to eat it plain. I have some in my fridge right now. My grandparents actually mm -hmm. just brought down for me, so um, I'll probably eat that right after I I get done with this live mm -hmm. stream. Gotcha. Um, but it goes good on any sandwich. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just a really good cheese but I love all cheese I'll I'll eat just about any um mm -hmm. and my hometown has seven cheese factories I think so uh between seven cheese factories they make all sorts of cheese so um Monroe Wisconsin is really the hot spot for cheese if you're a cheese lover uh hit up Monroe um I there's not a better place for cheese gotcha Cameron said he likes mozzarella how do you feel about mozzarella <laughs> Kale? mozzarella is really good because it melts really well on uh pizza mm -hmm. sandwiches anything gotcha um, so I'm definitely definitely on board with mozzarella. Cecily, what about you? Favorite cheese? Oh, gosh. Um, I'm kind of a fan of goat cheese lately. Goat cheese? 
<laughs> don't you not? I wish you guys could have felt the presence it's of these people. Um, yeah, I mean, it's good on a lot of things. Uh-huh. Just because you, you haven't made it to Gucci's yet, Gucci's. Gucci's. <laughs> Gucci's. Is, is, you have to get this at like. Can you get this at Walmart? Or is this like a Whole Foods kind of thing? Yeah, this is not a Whole Foods thing. You can get it mm-hmm. at Walmart. Try it out someday, guys. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> I was more talking about cheese that comes from cow's milk, but. So oh, likes- you're right. Oh, mm. I went outside the rules. Oh, well. Oh, well. Yeah, Cecily's making her own. Cecily's. Well, okay. All right. Is there, a, is there a cheese y'all think is overrated? Cheese that I think is overrated. Um, let's just say Kraft Singles. Yes. <laughs> yes. Kraft Singles. I used to love to make a good Think about cheese grew it. with mm-hmm. Kraft Singles. Um, but then I realized that that's kind of fake uh my time at the cheese factory working at the lab um gave me some more insight into how that type of cheese gets made so Mm -hmm. um it's kind of steered me away from that i prefer i prefer some other stuff gotcha yeah all right well i think that's all the questions we had thank y'all for talking to us about a uh, student leadership in cheese uh, we it. really appreciate it and you're a rock star yeah. can't wait to meet you come find us but yeah be sure to um follow uh lead hogs on um i think it's like ua lead hogs i think uh, so yeah, yeah and there's us. yeah there's st- uh, instagram accounts for uh for all the the leadership organizations out there and be sure to let us know if you have any questions feel free to dm us or email us Cool. Great to see you all. I didn't see any of you. Just kidding. Great Mm -hmm. to um, talk to you all. Awesome. Thank you, guys. All right. Bye, y'all.